guys welcome back hey lovies um new place right now um i'm not in the car so yeah um anyways um if you're new welcome this is my channel um you are now officially in the lovey game and if you're not new to the channel welcome back like i said before so as i told y'all last week this is Sickle Cell Awareness Month, and with that, you know, it's a lot of um, a lot of health issues, health concerns, etc. And I want to just make sure that um you all take you all understand about sickle cell, but you also take your health um, even if you don't have sickle cell, take that seriously. So, like I said last video, I will put it up here. Um, it basically was just asking, do you know your body? And this week, as you see in the title below, um, it is, do your daughters know you? So, we know we can have tons of doctors. We can have a rheumatologist. We can have our own our psychologists, we can have our physiologists, our cardiologists, we can hematologists, all these different things. Um, and you can be just one of those patients that's just in and out, you know, your daughters don't really know about you, they haven't seen you, you know, um, and stuff. And you know, sometimes that's a good thing because some people they don't need to have doctors know them because they don't have to go so much or everything is out of health concern or they don't really have these um, any issues where um, they don't have many issues basically where they need to go to the doctor as much as some people do. They don't have to um, go every two months, three months or whatever. They might go once every two years, which is all splendid. But uh, for people that do have health issues, which is a lot of us, I might have at least one thing that might be a problem where we need to figure out what's going on, but we don't really have the answer, or we're trying to Google search our WebMD, or this is any of those kind of situations, or those online doctors um, with those apps. What about y'all? Do y'all doctors really? Do y'all doctors really understand? Really know you? Um, like, I know I have to make sure that my daughters know me um, just because of my sickle cell. So, yes, I call my daughters in between visits. I might need refills for medication that I forgot about. I might um, have health issues where I have to call them. Um, I might um, have to get FMLA filled out for my mom. And no matter if I'm going to a old doctor, um, a new doctor that I've had, I make sure that my daughter does know me. My daughter, like, doesn't know um, first and last name, date of birth, weight, height, um, race. They understand that, okay, this is my health concern. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all, my best friend takes me. Um, this is my health concern. This is the goal that I want. Because um, some people, you know, like, my sickle cell, immediately you, let's say I have, let's say I sickle cell and some doctors will automatically think oh she wants to get rid of sickle cell so we're going to try to find all the treatment areas possible blah, 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 blah. all these different things that's not my my health that's not my health goal my health goal is living with sickle cell to the best that I can that's it and because I know I'm not trying to get rid of sickle cell like I said in my video last time I'm 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 really content with me having sickle cell. I'm perfectly fine with it. Um, sometimes it gets overwhelming. It gets irritating. But I'm perfectly fine with having sickle cell. Um, it's something that I've grown to grown grown to love. And honestly, I wouldn't really know how to act. I probably, the first thing I probably do is go run. That's probably the first thing I do. Um, but I really wouldn't know how to act without having sickle cell. And it honestly gives. It honestly gives, it might sound weird to y'all, but I feel a lot stronger than most than most people mentally because y'all might have to deal with, oh, I got bad knees, so I can't twerk, what they do, but man, 
said I haven't been in the hospital for three months. Needles every other hour. And blood transfusions, dealing with doctors, knowing medical stuff that I have more. Like, normal people will not know, knowing about insurance. I'm a lot stronger than a lot of these basic people around here in the streets. That's just my personal opinion, though, you know? But you just want to make sure, aside from that, <laughs> um, you just want to make sure that um, your doctors really know. They know your goals is your health, even if it's arthritis, even if it's um, you have weight issues. They might be like, oh, we want, they, she want to probably just let everybody get a skinny off. No, I might want to sit at this weight and stay at this weight. I want to be able to maintain this weight. And you also have to build that relationship where, because doctors are normally going to, well, let's say this from my experience, what I've seen, um, what I've seen in her, doctors normally, they, like better words, assume you're lying. Like, they might ask my health, I mean, they might ask, like, what I'm eating, what I'm watching, um, am I working out, and things, and they automatically assume that it's probably lower. Um, get in that relationship with your doctor where you're able to, like, where they know, okay, this person's not gonna lie to me, like, they, they're gonna be real honest with me, and what we need to do is what we, because, like, my doctors, I was real honest, my problem is, excuse me, especially when it came to medication, they would try to up my medication, and I'm like, oh, okay, and I leave, and I won't do it, and when I come back, and then I tell them the same thing, they're like, have you been taking the medication, and what we recommend, I'm like, no, I didn't. You know, that was my thing. I do not, I hate medication. I take too many pills every day already. Don't up nothing. Don't ask me. Take this pill because I'm I, I not. Nah. Period. <laughs> um, but that was my thing. And my doctors knew that. Like, um, my previous hematologist, she's been with me. Honestly, as long as I can remember, I really don't remember when I left my doc my hematologist, my doctor before her, my pediatrician before her, and went to this to that one. Um, I really don't know. They just kind of fused together, um, and I just kind of drifted and stopped going to one, and only started going to another one. As far as I know, she's been with me since birth, both um, both my old um, doctors, and um. My thing, um, I switched to a new daughter recently. What was that in March? Yeah, I switched from Dr. Roberts to Dr. Anderson. That's a man. Um, one, it was a bit of an adjustment because he is the first male doctor that I've had, uh, like for a big part of my health. Um, I've had male doctors like, um, my nephrologist, he's a male doctor. I was like, oh, okay, it's my kidneys, what do do? Whatever. Um, but switching from a female pediatrician slash hematologist to a all-female staff um, hematologist to switching to a male hematologist with just about all-female staff, I was shook. I was like, you're not about to be touching on my stomach, you're not about to be touching my chest, see if I can breathe right, I'll tell you if I can breathe right, because I can breathe right, period, don't touch me, you know, I was very apprehensive, um, and I was apprehensive before I even met the man, before I even knew what he looked like, I know the man white, black, Hispanic, I ain't know nothing about the man, I didn't know if he had four eyes, if he had green eyes, if he had a red and a blue eye, I ain't you know, I didn't know nothing about the man, I was already apprehensive and nervous, um, when I first went, luckily, well, not luckily, but luckily for me, yeah, it was a distraction. My health, I, I felt horrible. Like, heat one, um, I had, y'all, this tea is bomb. I need to make me some more. But, um, luckily, when I went, when I went to my appointment, I felt horrible my hips were hurting my sides were hurting i think i went in like april or something um maybe may i can't remember but i was in so much pain you remember and you had to think i was in the hospital for months so 
uh, well, me being in the hospital, the longest consistent length was 33 days. Um, and then I was in and out of the hospital and it wasn't even a full three days that I was in and out of the hospital. Um, so the hospital bills were accruing, best believe that, still paying on that, um, but that's all that story. Um, it was a big, big concern for me, um, just trying to make sure that I was comfortable with this man. And I was really, really, um, I was just, I was low-key, like, terrified of switching daughters. I cried when I left my, new, my old daughter, but I had to, because she kept us as long as she could. And it was either go to Greenville or go to Atlanta. I don't want to travel to Atlanta every, um, every time. So, I went to Greenville, and Greenville's close to it's what I'm used to, I went to Clemson, so close to, it's kind of, it's kind of a home away from home anyway with me, um, a home away from home, away from home, so yeah, it was so much pain, and I think what really made me feel like, okay, he's really looking, um, he's really looking for my best interest, because when I came in there, um, my grandma and my mom was with me, um, they were bombarding this man with the questions, shooting questions, shooting questions, he was answering, they were shooting them, going back and forth, and I'm sitting here, I can, I can barely sit on the table, my hips hurt, and I'm pushing back and forth, I can't really push, because my wrists are hurting and stuff, my hands, my arms are tight, muscles, just, everything's just hurting, like, and it's, the thing is, I wasn't having a crisis, I was already sore and still in pain from my last hospital visit, I haven't, I didn't recover, it was like, a month or a couple weeks later and I still had not recovered and it was just completely just tragic um and what made me feel like okay he's down for me is because throughout the whole thing he finished answering the questions he answered the questions they had no more questions left so then after that he looked at me and he was like he he didn't even he didn't touch me he didn't um look at me it wasn't even 20 seconds he um I wasn't crying I just looked like I was beyond irritated I was ready to go back to sleep in the car I slept the whole way there and I slept the whole way back um and that was the only kind of relief that I could have by that moment was going to sleep which is that happens a decent amount of times honestly with pain the like people ask me oh what can I do you know what kind of relief can we get you let me go to sleep it's all I got. They haven't figured out a medicine that can completely alleviate pain fully. Um, but that's exactly dealt with. Um, or they might have. I just can't have it all. Um, but he looked at me up from his own. And I remember it. It sounded really weird the way I can't remember this. Because um, it sounds like, you know, first time you saw the love of your life or something. But first time I saw could possibly one of my favorite doctors, not gonna lie, um, he looked, he, he looked up from his clipboard after he finished answering my own questions and got my question and wrote everything down, and he said, you're in pain, aren't you, and I was just like, I just finished shifting my weight, all it looked, it looked like, like, mommy and grandma know I was in pain, they didn't say nothing to me. I mean, they didn't say nothing to him about me being in pain. They didn't say nothing about, um, like, I didn't look like, uh, you know, all them kind of faces or whatever. I was just just my way because I was just ready to go back to sleep. I was half asleep anyway. I was half asleep. I was tired. Um, I felt like crap. Um, I was just like, the sooner we can get out of here, the sooner I can get in the back seat with my body pillow, and it can be a wrap. He was like, you're in pain. And I was like, yes. made me realize that okay this man he can immediately pick up on stuff it ain't no with y'all people and this good vibes and this good energy and this the the universe was telling that ain't none of this kind of situation he ain't over here carrying no rocks and stuff um taking no bells and stuff he no 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 he ain't doing none of that but he was like you're not feeling good like you, you know, you can clearly see somebody. You can see when somebody's pregnant. 
and you know I'm pregnant most of the time. You can tell so you pregnant. So he's like, You're not feeling good. And I was like, No. And he was like, he was like, Is it your joints or your muscles? Which is a question that I've never heard in my entire life. I go to the hospital, doctors ask me, is it on a scale of one to ten? And point to where it's hurting and stuff. His first question was, is it your joints or your muscles? Normally, it's my joints or my muscles. Sometimes it's both. Sometimes it's, you know, it's certain joints, certain muscles. But that's the first time I ever heard that question, you know, put together joints or muscles. And I was like, joints. Um, Because I knew my muscles were hurting because of me having to move my joints and stuff. It's because I don't have to tell a doctor, oh, my muscles are hurting if my muscles only are an effect of a cause. I normally don't do that. I don't, I'm like, don't give me no medicine for that because it's only hurt because it's been working extra hard because of this. I need this to work. So then this will be at ease. Um, and I was like, joints. And he said, you sit, you like, you sit really uncomfortable on the table. He said, it's your hips. Yep. He laid me down. He um, felt my hips. And he was like, okay, so... I can tell normally um I was confused when he he was like he was confused when he looked at my chart because he assumed that it was honestly um one of those kind of situations bone infarctions I would already have it but I was developing it then he prescribed me some medicine the medicine works like a freaking charm um nowadays it, it does work I have to take it as needed because I can't take it daily like I used to it's because it messes up another medicine that I take which messes up another body part that's already broken like a better words <laughs> made sense but um he really just he was really quick and efficient when he realized when he was able to diagnose and figure out what was going on and he was asked, able to ask the right questions and you know normally it's harder with adult um sickle cell patients because there's so much more that can happen you know we normally hear the typical um child things and those are normal things that happen. But as an adult, you have so much more dealing with because you have, let's say, you have women, men that hit puberty. You can have um, all these situations that may happen. Um, childbirth, pregnancy, you know, um, starting to have sex. So taking off medicine, other medicines that can be a withdrawal that does mess up this. Um, just all these different kind of factors and stuff. Children you don't really have that issue and it was such a blessing to realize okay I made the right choice to go to him because he's really going to be able to help me he's really um knows what he's talking about he's really informative and, edu- and educated in this situation oh um, yes he's an adult he's an adult and child hematologist and he didn't treat me like a child asked me you like adult if I needed help I would ask my mama period um I ain't gonna never stop doing that one. Um, because she knows from stuff without. I, I don't remember when I was a child. Like, she knows my first sister surprise at six months. I don't remember that. But obviously, I did. Um, but she's able to help me with those kind of things. And he was okay with that. He wasn't like, a, I'm asking you only. She can't come in here. Anything with COVID? Yes, only one person can come back in there. And as an adult, he still allows one person to come back there with me to help because um I may still need that my grandma she's she knows a decent bit about my about my health you know um being active in my life with my sickle cell and she has questions questions honestly my grandma has questions that I wouldn't think of and I like that that when she comes like sometimes I'm like I wouldn't have thought of that I didn't that's a smart question to ask grandma she's like I read this and I read that and what I heard um is that true do you know have you done any research and my doctor he's not even um you know how some doctors you'll be like oh let me try this and they're like okay I just research on it they don't research where it applies to you they just do their research on it and they'll make a kind of decision like um okay I don't think it affects their health too much yeah you can have you can take that or whatever um what's it called it can be a health like moringa um i was introduced um excuse me to moringa and i was like i ain't sure about this you know let me let me
me check with my doctor. And Dr. Anderson, he didn't. Oh, let me go research. Because I did my own research. So you can find what I found on Google. Maybe my find is still a virgin. I don't know if there's like a doctor's Google or whatever. Um, you can find basically what I found. He said, no, let me find it according to dealing with your sickle cell. See if there's any research on that. Because my health is just not a normal health, you know. It's because, you know, just because it's a health that you can't see does not mean that it's, it's an invisible health. It's really not. Um, and for people that are ignorant to that, I, I like to try to tell them the pain things, but they can't really understand. So I try to compare it as much to cancer as I possibly can. We lose our hair. Um, we get tired. We um, take cancer drugs. Um, we go through transfusions and stuff. Just like they go through chemotherapy. Um, we have surgeries. They have certain, like, we all are, we kind of get grouped in the same stuff and put, like, hospitalized, we get put on the same floor. Um, we have doctors that care for both of, both of our kinds together. We in the same boat, really. It's a blood disorder just like it is with cancer, you know. Um, we can have bone marrow transplants, all those different kinds of things. So I try to compare that really to cancer because they like, oh, since everybody's cancer scholars, but nobody's sickle cell scholar. Nobody knows nothing. Um, but I, I really um, try to make sure that my doctor understands what I'm looking for, what I need concerning my health, what I want, what are my goals for my life, um, how I want to live my life, you know. Um, and even with my um my what is it? My regular doctor. I don't know the name of it. All I know is hematologist, oncologist, and, ne- and nephrologist. I don't know my regular doctor's name, but she, um, she's a family doctor. Um, honestly, she's my mom's doctor, my sister's doctor. I have friends that go to her. Um, I recommend her to friends. Um, she's honestly like all over like mom.com and she would try to recommend everything natural in this book that you can eat um before she recommends a pill to you before she recommends a supplement to you um which i really love um my only problem is that she would try to recommend beets to me every day if she could i'm not eating beets okay but I do put it in a smoothie, so we have a way there, you know, we trying, but I refuse to eat beets, and I just, I can't stomach it, unless, um, my friend makes it, she can put it in a smoothie, um, dot com, okay, now I have, at home, I have a beets mixture, that's supposed to give you energy and help with, like, blood circulation, roughly behind me, but yeah, um, like she'll try to recommend natural stuff first, which I like because don't put me on crazy medicines because I'm I am not 90 year 90 year old and I do not I take a range from about eight, I take about 11 to 20 pills a day. Um, I think 12, 12 to 20 pills a day, um, depending on my needs. And I'm not trying to take any more, so why would you recommend more for me? You know. You gonna get this, and that's it. Um, so she has to recommend natural stuff just for my health before she recommends me with um, vitamin supplements, and they might help. You know, like even I, you know, market for some bomb behind on vitamins and supplements. I can't have them just for my health. You know, I take enough. But I just, like, she understands my health goals, too. I call her for anything. I, um, my mom has her cell number, you know. I um, call the doctor. I know her nurse that works with her. Um, and, like, she bombs. She tries to make sure my health is good. Like, when I was in hospital, they called to check on me and things, you know. And that's what you really want to have, that personal, that personal relationship with your daughter. You know? um, and I need, and I have to make sure that doctors think about that. You want to make sure doctors think about that with your health. You don't want to sit here and think that it's just okay, you know, just to have a doctor that 
that's that, that's the basic necessities. Cause I'm paying you a lot of money. I am paying your house right now. I'm paying your car. We know to get done. Your hair. I'm paying whatever necessary things. I'm paying for these shoes. You know, for your kids to eat. I'm helping you out. So you need to help me out. It has to be an exchange. Okay. It has to be a bargain trade situation here. I'm sorry. I went on a rampage today. Um, just trying to make sure you know your health is a big concern because you only got one body. So take care of the best of it that you can while you're here. The Bible says, body is a temple. Do not defile the temple, okay? So, I love y'all. Thank y'all for watching. Um, hopefully this video is not as long as I recorded this because it is pretty long.